Welcome to the Setting and Maintaining Boundaries When Working with Older Adults training session. This is the second session of a training uh, training purposes for Neighbor Works, Aging in Place, Friendly Visitor, and Connection and Resource Engagement, otherwise known as CARES Calls. My name is Marian Jursik, and I am the Aging in Place Manager. My role here at Neighbor Works is to oversee all of the Aging in Place programs. However, I'm also a licensed social worker and have taught at Marywood University in their School of Social Work regarding older adults, policy and advocacy, advocacy and foundations, which also focuses on setting boundaries with vulnerable populations. So what are boundaries and why are they important to set when working with vulnerable populations? Personal boundaries are guidelines and rules or limits that we set with other individuals so that we can cre create reasonable, safe, and permissible ways for other people to behave towards us and how we will respond when someone passes those limits. Personal boundaries are set in our own um, beliefs, values, attitudes, past experiences, and social learnings. We all have different boundary levels, and we all have different areas in which a person can overstep boundaries. And that is very important to understand where your boundaries lie. So who sets boundaries? In this case, boundaries are set by the worker or you, the volunteer, the friendly visitor, or the care caller. Setting boundaries does not have to be a formal discussion with the individual with whom you're working with. Many times, uh, setting boundaries can happen naturally and organically. Somebody asks you to do something that you're not comfortable with and you politely decline. Typically, this will not go any further. However, we will review what to expect and how to react if somebody is pushing your boundaries. One of the items that is reviewed prior to the older adult accessing this program by our aging in place um, specialist are the roles and the responsibilities which were reviewed in session one of the friendly visitor or care caller. So why should you set up boundaries? Um, it Boundaries set an expectation for future and current work. What we mean by this is if somebody oversteps their boundaries and you allow that to happen, it's going to continue happening. One of the golden rules of the Friendly Visitor Program is that you're not to purchase anything for the older adult. However, if you are out and about, and you purchase a coffee for the older adult. This may now then seem like something that is going to continually happen and set an expectation with the older adult that you will continue to purchase the coffee whenever you're out and about. Regardless of whether or not that you have um, participated in this expectation, it is your role to ensure that that boundary is now addressed and no longer crossed. Maintaining boundaries also allows us to conserve our emotional and physical energy. When somebody crosses boundaries with us, it can be a very large stress, re, um, stress instigator on our system, can cause us worry, and can cause us trauma, um, both emotionally and physically. So we want to make sure, especially with our volunteers who are working with our older adult population, that we here at NeighborWorks are assisting you in setting boundaries so that you can take the positive um, emotional energy that you have and put it towards working through positive engagement with the older adults. This also uh, assists you in maintaining your role. There will be different situations when working through the Friendly Visitor Program or the Care Calls Program 
where you will have to redefine your role as a friendly visitor or a care caller. As as pre-discussed in the uh, first session, you are not a caretaker, you are not a bus driver, you are not a daycare worker for the older adult. You are there to provide um, social enter, um, <clears throat> excuse me, social engagement um, to prevent and decrease social isolation. So what are some of the boundaries that you may encounter when working with your older adults? Um, please keep in mind that the older adult you're working with will not attempt to maliciously um, step across those boundaries that are being set. Um, they will come to to be comfortable with you, they will come to trust you. This is what we want to see happen so that you can provide more positive engagement opportunities. However, this is also when one of the first, the second, first or second ways in which in a trusting relationship, boundaries can get crossed. The first way is if somebody um, is trying to get their needs met, um, where they have something, a barrier that they need addressed, um, they will initially attempt to have you address that barrier, such as our first um, typical barrier crossing request from older adults is transportation. And so when you first meet, the older adult may try to test those boundaries and, you know, ask you to run them to the store or to run them to the post office, take them over to their uh, daughter's house, things like that. It is at this time where they are testing your limits to see what you are willing and able to, you know, put in that gray area of the boundaries. <clears throat> The next time, the next situation this will happen is once, as just previously discussed, that trusted relationship has been set up and they feel comfortable asking you to now do these um, activities that are uh, cro crossing that boundary and that line. So we typically see in our work with vulnerable uh, populations, um, the following request meets, requests made transportation, large or continued meal prep, bathing assistance, cleaning assistance, yard or sidewalk maintenance. Many of these can be considered a gray area when working with older adults. You may wanna to go to an activity with the older adults and the only way that you initially believe that you can get to that activity is to be the one providing the transportation to the older adults. If transportation is a barrier, please reach out to NeighborWorks Aging in Place Manager, me, and we can talk through some different ways in which transportation can be coordinated. There are several um, different transportation options in Lackawanna, Luzerne, and Wayne counties for older adults. Although many of them have to be uh, requested in advance, they do take older adults too medical appointments, community engagement appointments, and meal um, assistance appointments, such as grocery shopping. Um, continued meal prep. Many of the times when we're meeting with individuals on, on a friendly basis, we wanna share a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, um, you know, a beverage or a light snack. This is completely acceptable and not crossing a boundary when going over in meeting with the older adult, you know, to assist in the making of the, the beverage or the snack. Um, don't, if it starts to feel like it is expected of you or a chore, then it needs to be addressed as a boundary. However, what we ask that you not do is be a continued meal uh, preparer for the older adults. And examples of this are if you typically go over, you know, two days a week during the noontime hour and you are consistently making the older adult lunch. The, uh, the basis and the goal of the Friendly Visitor Program is to engage with them, not to be a caretaker or to be the sole responsibility, uh, be the person with the sole responsibility of ensuring that they're getting their needs met. <clears throat> 
bathing assistance. Um, if an individual does have or does request does have barriers or does request bathing assistance, please let us know. Or if the family is involved, please let the family know. There are programs within each of the three counties we serve that can assist with bathing and food prep assistance for older adults through each of the respective area agency on aging. Cleaning assistance. Um, many of the older adults we work with do not have the stamina or the muscle deficiencies or have muscle deficiencies that prevent them from keeping their home as, clean, as cleanly as they they like. And so the older adults may request that you just tidy up you know, that space and then um, so that you can sit or some, or another task um, to make yourself more comfortable. This is fine as long as it's for meeting your needs. However, what is not appropriate is for you to, again, be the main um, giver or provider of the cleaning assistance. So you are not there to dust, you are not there to do the laundry, you are not there to do the dishes. Um, you know, moving items from one space to another so that you can sit, have a comfortable place to sit, bringing in, you know, the stack of mail off the side table into the kitchen so that you can, you know, assist in um, reading bills or letters or anything like that. Perfectly acceptable, however, if it's something that a job should be done, um, please address it with neighbor works or with the, the older adult has family involved in their life. The last one that we see quite frequently is yard or sidewalk maintenance. Um, older adults, you know, if you're, um, especially in the summer, if you are sitting outside and enjoying the garden or the fresh air or anything like that, um, you know, may say, oh, you know what I see? I see that little weed down there. Can you grab it? If that's not associated with the way that you are engaging with the older adult, then that is not your responsibility. However, if the two of you both enjoy gardening and you have decided that that's an act a planned activity that you're going to engage in together, completely different um, situation. You know, you may both agree that um, when you come over, you're going to tend to the garden, engage in conversation, and enjoy your love of the outdoors together. So um, some of the reasons um, older adults may request these activities from you. They can be very different depending on the adult, but the most relevant throughout the older adult population is that they may see that you are an able-bodied individual who cares about them and wants to spend time with them and therefore don't see the distinction between being a friendly visitor, care caller, and to be engaging with them on a social level, um, but you know, just somebody who has the ability to assist them. As previously mentioned, it's typically never malicious um, and it has nothing to do with you um, being the type of person that they assume should be assisting them. But you're someone they trust, that you've cut you there, so, you are someone they've come to trust, um, that they feel comfortable asking these very personal tasks of. It may also be um, that they don't understand the uh, boundary level there and um, your role as a friendly visitor or as, as a care caller. This is when it's completely appropriate to uh, discuss with them what your purpose for being there is. You know, a, a kind way of explaining that, you know, I'm not really here to do your dishes, Mrs. Jones. However, if you'd like, we can discuss how you can get that completed. Um, we can review some of the social service organizations in the area, or perhaps we can discuss with your daughter how to get that done. Um, it's, you know, called redirecting, um, and redirecting is a great way to you know, set that boundary on the table, make sure it's acknowledged, and then just, you know, move on to other things. 
So everyone has a toolbox when you're working with vulnerable uh, populations. And so there are some tools that you'll need in your toolbox when you're setting um, boundaries with older adults. We just discussed redirecting and clarifying your role. Um, again, none of these conversations have to be harsh or, um, you know, extremely, you know, punitive or just uh, assertive. Um, they can be said, you know, very like, oh, you know, lighthearted. And you know what? That's not really my goal, my job. Um, and then just clarifying that you are there to provide, you know, engagement with them. Um, you can cite some of the activities that you've decided to do together. You know, um, hey, Mrs. Jones, I'm not here to do your dishes. I'm here to go take, we're here to go take walks together and see what's going on in the park and how many dogs there um, are playing fetch. Um, the situation, like you can use a situation like that to, you know, redefine and clarify that role. Should it escalate, it's appropriate to be direct and to say, no, that is not my role. And again, to go back to clarifying your role. One of the most important pieces of setting boundaries is to tune into your feelings. There are some, you know, black and white rules that we have here through NeighborWorks volunteer programs, specifically related to friendly visitor and care calls in which we request that you not participate in certain activities or engage in certain activities with the older adults. However, there are also some activities that some people may be very comfortable you know, doing and other people may not be very comfortable doing. And so this is where we tune into our own feelings, but also um, in being able to be direct and clarifying our role in what we are comfortable doing. The other side of tuning into our own feelings is also tuning into the older adult's feelings. And, you know, if they are consistently asking for something, it's obvious and obviously a need. If they are showing embarrassment or even on the other end, aggression when asking for this role, for this need or for this barrier to be addressed, tune into how they are feeling and not getting this request met. Um, you know, if it's somebody who has always been very neat and tidy and now their body, the way that they are aging is not allowing them to keep up on their house. They may be experiencing embarrassment. They might be losing pride in themselves and their home. And so, you know, they're not feeling good about themselves now too. And they want to you know, they want to pick that up. And so by doing, by asking you to clean up their house, they're trying to increase um, their quality of life as well. This does not make it your responsibility to do, but we can always talk through how do we get them in the assistance um, to address that barrier that's decreasing their quality of life. Practice self-awareness. This goes uh, right into, you know, tuning into your own feelings. Um, are you reflecting anything on to the older adult um, in regards to your own values and morals and judgments? We also want to be assertive. We don't want to be aggressive, um, but being assertive and being direct. Um, you know, if we are wishy-washy or, or kind of beating around the bush about um, a boundary that we're trying to send, send that's going to get confusing. And so, you know, the older adult might not understand that you're saying no to that. They may think you don't understand the request. They may think that there's other areas um, that you can assist with related to the request. So be assertive, be direct. In all areas, NeighborWorks staff is here to support you. If you are having difficulties in setting boundaries or requests requests that the older adults are asking you that you're not comfortable with, feel free at any time to reach out to myself or the rest of the Aging in Place staff to talk about these barriers and issues that you're having. And we will happily talk through um, solutions or just hear your concerns. For the questions that will be related to this 
uh, presentation, the questionnaire that will accompany it. Uh, please review this group activity regarding Mrs. Jones and answer the questions associated with it. Here's a second group activity that I am requesting you also read through for the questionnaire that is associated with this presentation. Thank you for participating in the maintaining and setting boundaries with older adults. Some final thoughts that we have here um, are, you know, ensuring that is that you understand that we all have our own personal boundaries um, and how to relay that to different people. Um, what you share with an older adult that you're working with through the Friendly Visitor or Cares Program Care Calls program is up to you. Some older adults may be very open to sharing their entire life stories, and you might not be, and that's perfectly acceptable and perfectly okay. They may sh share with you that, hey, the friendly visitor or the care caller I had last year, they shared everything with me. And it's perfectly appropriate to say, well, that's nice. You know what? Maybe we'll, you know, let's talk about you. Maybe we'll get to that point. But, and again, we can redirect. We don't have to be aggressive and tell them that and shut them down that we don't want them to know anything about this, but we can redirect the conversation as to not share information that we're not comfortable with. I previously mentioned the black and white hard rules that we have here in the Friendly Visitor and Care Call program that we request that you not engage with or participate with the older adults. We request that friendly visitors cannot assist with the following. Transportation, please do not transport an older adult in your personal or other vehicle um, to or from events or locations in which you're participating. If there is a, a transportation barrier, please reach out to us and we will assist you or assist the older adult in coordinating to get there. Transport transporting an older adult is a liability not only on neighbor works, but also can be on yourself if something should happen. Re we request that you not assist with cleaning. Should the older adult need cleaning assistance, again, we can assist in coordinating that with the older adult. Your role as a friendly visitor is to be there for engagement um, and to participate in social activities. You are not a maid. You are not a cleaning person. You are a friendly visitor. The same goes with large meal prep. Um, you know, individuals who have struggles with food security or um, prepping and um, cooking their own meals may ask you for this assistance. As previously discussed, assisting with a quick snack, a cup of coffee, you know, as long as that's something that's comfortable with you, we're comfortable with that. However, if you're being asked to do large or continuous meal prep, there's an underlying barrier there that we can help to address regarding food security or food preparation. Please do not assist with any home maintenance. If there is a repair or an accessibility issue that the older adult is having, please reach out to NeighborWorks. That is one of our flagship programs and we will attempt to assist the older adults. Last but not least, please do not pay for anything that is related to the older adult. If there is an activity in which you want to engage in with the older adult and there is a fee associated with it, please let NeighborWorks staff know and we will assist you in providing the, in the monetary uh, payment of that fee. Um, if you choose to go out to you know, lunch or to a diner, um, and you know, you're know you splitting, please split the check if that's something. Um, you can also request funds from NeighborWorks um, within reason to participate in activities such as that. 
Thank you for participating and listening to session two of the Friendly Visitor and Care Calls program. My name is Mary Andrusik. You are welcome to reach out to me with any questions or concerns you may have by contacting NeighborWorks Northeastern Pennsylvania.